Hello everyone, I'm Daniela Elena. Welcome to season four of Historical Paranormal. This is the final season, and we're gonna kick off 2022 with the story of Dennis Martin and the Smoky Mountain Cannibals. In June of 1969, six-year-old Dennis Martin went camping with his older family members. The Martin family was from Knoxville and had established a long tradition of the male members of the household taking a camping trip to the nearby Smoky Mountain National Park to celebrate Father's Day. Dennis traveled to the park for his first camping trip alongside his father, grandfather, and older brother initially arriving at Cades Cove. The group then hiked to Russell Field where they camped overnight. The following morning, they set off for the Spence Field, a highland meadow and popular camping spot bisected by the famous Appalachian Trail. On arrival, the two Martin children were allowed to play with others camping nearby. Ironically, that family's name was Martin as well. His father watched the boy disappear into the bushes to hide alongside the other children as they set about springing a surprise on the adults. However, while the other children quickly emerged, Dennis did not. Immediately, his father and grandfather began searching for him, with his father running two miles along the trail, shouting his name before returning to the camp. His grandfather hiked out to raise the alarm, arriving at Cades Cove Ranger Station at around 8.30 p.m. An extensive search was launched with National Park Service personnel supplemented by National Guard troops and and Green Berets. In total, around 1,400 searchers found no sign of the child. The search was later criticized in part due to the large number of personnel involved potentially obscuring tracks in the ground that was already difficult to track over due to heavy rain. The tracks of a child were found but dismissed as belonging to one of the Boy Scouts that were helping with the search. However, the tracks were later reported to have come from a child who was missing one shoe and which disappeared on the bank of a stream, suggesting they likely belonged to Martin. This was supported when a shoe and sock were found three days into the search. U.S. Army Green Berets during the search image Despite searchers continuing their effort for over two weeks, no further trace of Martin was ever found. A $5,000 reward offered by the family turned up a number of calls from psychics, but never anything that led to a breakthrough. Some years later, a man who had been illegally collecting ginseng in the park claimed to have come across the skeletal remains of a child, but failed to inform authorities until 1985 for fear of persecution. When followed up, searchers again drew a blank. Martin's father, however, believes that his son was taken by another person. This theory appears to be based largely on the eyewitness account of Harold Keith, a visitor to the park that reported hearing a loud scream on the afternoon Martin disappeared. Shortly after, he claims to have seen a disheveled man covered in hair and attempting to remain unseen, fleeing through the woods. Key's family elaborated from the figure, elaborated that the figure had a red object slung over his shoulder, matching the clothing Martin was wearing. Despite the report, FBI investigators ultimately dismissed it, given that the sighting had taken place more than five miles from where Martin had vanished and Key was unclear on the timeline. He later speculated the man may have been a moonshiner, explaining his reluctance to to be seen. One retired park ranger lamented the failure to properly follow up either the footprints or the sighting of the rough-looking man. He argued that as the location of the sighting was downhill from where Martin disappeared, it was more than reasonable for a relative fit individual to cover that distance in the time frame, even carrying a child. Some people lend credence that that figure who was hairy or covered in potentially fur skins could have been a feral person. And there are stories of feral people living in national parks. With the location being in Appalachia, there is a lot of inbreeding that has gone on. So to follow up on this and looking at the idea of feral people or even cannibals in national parks, we'll now take a look at some statistics on missing persons in national parks. National parks have historically been places that inspire morbid curiosity and rampant imagination with acres of dense, often unexplored forests. Many fear what could be lurking inside. These fears are not entirely irrational either, with 2,727 deaths in U.S. national parks over the past 12 years. Recently, many people have taken to TikTok to attempt to explain the phenomenon. 
Some claim that those responsible for these deaths are hordes of feral cannibal people living in the depths of national parks, killing and eating people. This theory has been trending on the video platform TikTok, where outdoors enthusiasts and conspiracy theorists alike have been sharing their own stories of national parks visits ranging from mildly creepy to downright terrifying. TikToker Chronicles of Olivia posted a video detailing her experience at Lena Lake in Washington state in which she found hundreds of what she described as humanoid footsteps at the top of the mountain she was climbing. After after filing an official report with, with no conclusive evidence, Olivia still contends that the footsteps she found belong to a humanoid creature that the government is hiding due to their lack of official species classifications. Mysteriously, her TikToks describing her experience have been deleted, though her videos are still available on her YouTube channel. In January of 2020, another TikToker going by the name The Present Believer claimed to hear blood-curdling screams during her visit to Big Bend National Park in Brewster County, Texas. While camping with her husband and daughter, Ariel heard multiple people screaming deep within the wilderness of the park, yelling phrases such as, We're gonna die! Call a ranger! I love you! Just know that! Ariel and her family reported the incident to the police and park. Rangers who found nothing there has been no documented evidence of this incident, but her story has made the rounds on TikTok and has inspired many others to tell their stories as well. After TikToks like these went viral, hundreds of other videos have surfaced of people telling similar stories of creepy happenings in national parks. And with the help of conspiracy theorists and groupthink, many have jumped to the same conclusion, the existence of feral cannibal people. These theorists assert that due to the dense and largely undiscovered nature of national parks, that a subhuman species of people have been living in these areas, occasionally terrorizing local and visitors alike, refusing entirely to take into account the existence of dangerous wildlife in these disappearances. TikToker Gracious have even claims that there are several eyewitness accounts of these creatures and that the police are neglecting to investigate. As rumors run amok, an increasing number of people have stated that they will never enter a national park again for the fear of these creatures. Sustainability scientists and content creator Elena Wood, known as the Garbage Queen on TikTok, also contributed to the conversation through TikTok, doing her best to debunk. In her TikTok, Elena reacts to a video of another TikToker filming herself while camping in the Great Smoky Mountains where creepy noises can be heard in the background. Elena, as a resident of the Tennessee Mountains, explains her familiarity with wildlife, noises such as the ones coming from coyotes heard in the videos. She goes on to debunk the cannibalistic people theory and explains that many of those spooky happenings in national parks can be chalked up to animals like bears, bobcats, cougars, and other wildlife. Other natives of Appalachian Mountains area have also come forward to speak out about the claiming about this claiming that much of these theories come from folklore and myths that have been around for years. Many know that conspiracy theories like these uphold harmful stereotypes about Appalachian people and circulate unnecessary fear-mongering about often misunderstood populations. It is likely those native to the area note that much of the hysteria around killer cannibals comes from long retold pieces of folklore that are just now reaching the mainstream. However, instances of missing people in national parks are still all too real, and a string of cold cases leaves unanswered questions about those who were never found. Former police officer and investigator David Polides released several books and one documentary on the subject titled Missing for All in One. This series chronicles many disappearances that Polides investigated throughout his career, all of which took place in national parks and none offering any plausible explanation. Keith Parkins, another case that raises eyebrows of a two-year-old who disappeared while visiting his grandfather's ranch in the middle of Ritter, Oregon by Umatilla National Forest. His disappearance launched a full investigation by local authorities, which led to him being found 12 miles away from the ranch, lying unconscious in the snow. As a toddler, Keith had no way of moving this far on his own without even warm clothing. It's surprising that he even survived. Years later, as an adult, Parkins was interviewed for Missing 411 and claimed no recollection of the event. The case leaves many questions that remain unanswered, and many are still fascinated by it. No one has figured out how a young child could have moved into a far distance in the middle of the night through such adversity, and some wonder if a person of or creature was responsible for moving him. Like these, there are many other cases that have been documented similarly in national parks. For more information, check out Missing 411 either on Hulu or as the book series. Phenomena like these are undoubtedly interesting, bewildering, and indeed somewhat creepy. So in conclusion, the story of Dennis Martin's disappearance is quite chilling as well as sad. What do you believe about these disappearances? 
Is it possible it was simply people who were unable to su survive in the wilderness and were eaten by wildlife? Or eventually experienced dehydration and starvation? Or is it possible that there are creatures or feral cannibals that dwell in these national parks and prey on unsuspecting victims or is the government somehow involved that wraps up today's episode stay tuned for next sunday until next time